have ordered an investigation to be begun. Um, the FBI is coordinating with the Justice Department to see if any laws were broken in connection um, with those matters related to the IRS. Those were, I think, as everyone can agree, uh, if not criminal, they were certainly outrageous and unacceptable. But we are examining uh, the facts to see if there were criminal violations. Good afternoon and welcome to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. Outrageous and unacceptable. That was Eric Holder yesterday talking about this broadening scandal of the harassment of not just conservative groups, but pro-Israel groups and others. Fox News commentator and author Monica Crowley is here to talk politics with me. Monica, um, the acting commissioner says politics uh, wasn't a part of this. Is that believable? Very tough to make that argument now we've got mounting evidence that it just wasn't one Tea Party group or one conservative group. Now we have evidence that over 500 groups that are either conservative Tea Party have the word patriot, uh, opposed Obamacare, opposed the president's policies in other areas that they specifically were targeted. So this looks really like political profiling, looks really possibly illegal. And that's why you've got to have an investigation apart from what Eric Holder was talking about in internal a Justice Department criminal investigation, that's fine, but I think you have to have an independent set of eyes on this. You can't have the Department of Justice, which is up to its eyeballs in another scandal, the AP scandal, <laughs> I'm taking a look at this as well. Yeah, we've got a lot of scandals going on. I'm not, I want to get to those in one moment. Um, we had a James Bovard op-ed this morning that chronicled IRS abuse all the way back mm -hmm. in the days of FDR. Um, is this scandal really so different? Isn't this just a continuation of a pattern? Well, I'll tell you what's different. Yes, we have had it go all the way back to FDR. Uh, the Kennedy family was infamous for this. Lyndon Johnson sicked the IRS on Richard Nixon in the 1960s. And then, of course, Nixon, Article 2 of his Articles of Impeachment involved the misuse of, of the Internal Revenue Service. So this isn't anything new, but here's what's different. After Watergate, they passed a new set of laws to make this kind of thing illegal so that you couldn't do political profiling. You couldn't use the most feared agency in America, the IRS, to go after your political opponents. I mean, that's what dictatorships are all about. That's what communist societies are about and, and authoritarian regimes. That's what they do. The United States of America, we're not supposed to be doing that. So you have laws on the books preventing this. That's what's so particularly outrageous. And remember, Mary, the president sets the tone for all of this. He may or may not have known about the IRS targeting. That's yet to be discovered. But the bigger question is that the president sets a culture, sets a tone for his administration administration and for how he's going to govern. You know, I'm glad that you raised the president because uh, the New York Times said this week, you know, President Obama, he's not to blame for this. You had uh, New York Magazine coming out and lambasting Senator Rubio for calling for the acting commissioner's mm -hmm. resignation. You know, the media has really coddled this White House. Are, are they going to yeah. push this IRS scandal you know, it, it behind raises, the curtain, too? It raises such an important point, Mary, which is thanks to, look, Obama created a cult of personality, which was then perpetuated by the press. The press has buffeted him. They, he, they've really protected him and insulated him. Not this and press, result, I might add. <laughs> not the Wall Street Journal, no. This, this press exempted. But they have, they've created a situation where the president is admired and loved without having to perform. So when the crap does hit the fan, as it is right now, there, there is sort of this, this jarring disconnect because now the press realizes they do actually have to cover something. And perhaps this administration may or may not, but may be guilty of some wrongdoing here. And, and so everything is coming as a fresh kind of uh, experience here when the, that should not be the case. The press has not done their job with President Obama from the very beginning. And now it looks like total chaos, both in the White House and in the press trying to figure out what to cover and how to cover it. Monica, less than a minute left. We've got three major scandals, though. The AP seizure, uh, uh, DOJ seizing AP uh, uh, phone records, the Benghazi cover-up, uh, and now this IRS <laughs> harassment scandal. Is the president's second term dead in the water? Or again, is this something that with media cooperation just might pass? Not dead in the water yet because again, the media is so protective of him. They realize they have to cover these scandals because they have just metastasized so and, and they're, they're important. But I don't, I wouldn't write him off yet. He is a survivor. He does come out of <laughs> Chicago. But again, you get to the question of presidential leadership. I mean, he knows nothing. He's on the record as saying, didn't know anything about the Benghazi 
whistleblowers or anything about who came up with the fiction about the video to blame it on, doesn't know anything about the AP and, and the DOJ spying on the Associated Press, doesn't know anything about the IRS politically targeting his opponents. I mean, you hire a president to know stuff, Mary. Yeah, well, it's so either they're lying right. or he's the most incompetent president who ever right. was. Well, it's certainly a weak defense, in some respects, even an unbelievable defense. Fox News commentator and author Monica Crowley, thank Always you so a much pleasure. Thank for you, coming on the show.